What is going on everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are doing stock up, stock down for week two of college football. So if you guys are new, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that fun YouTube jazz down below. Would love to get to talk to you guys. And this is a brand new format for you guys who are regulars on the channel. Yes, I continue trying to improve the channel every time. So we're using higher end recording equipment. We're using higher end graphics. So Feel free to give some feedback on that because always there's always room for improvement. And also comment what series you guys like to see. It's way too early for seven round mocks and we already finished up all the season predictions. So uh, let me know what you guys think and then let's roll right into it with the guys who are going to be stocking up. All right, so starting off with the stock up is Chase Brown. Yeah, big fan of Chase here. He's had three weeks of complete dominance, and they've been against a variety of teams. This week, it was against Virginia. I think he had somewhere over like 190 yards. Absolutely ridiculous. The guy is just absolutely going off. So, a uh, big fan of Chase Brown. He's popped off. He is a fifth year, so I'm not going to be putting him really any higher than probably 61, regardless of how good he's playing. Just because, again, like, to be fair, rookies or running backs usually only last one contract, if not maybe a slight small second extension. So age isn't exactly that huge of a factor unless you're looking for a franchise guy. But uh, Chase Brown, he's moving up, man. Guy is absolutely dynamic. He's good as a receiver as well. Uh, this guy could be really pushing the boards come uh, April. So definitely keep an eye on him. I think that he's made two big jumps over the past couple weeks. He's a repeat offender, so to speak, on this series in the best way possible. So big fan of Chase Brown. And we're going to continue with... Osiris Torrance. Uh, you see it's a very small rank movement here, but again, when you're in the top 32, every little piece is essential, and this guy's been balling out for the Florida Gators. He played really well against a pretty stout Kentucky front that gets guys drafted almost every single year, and you know what? I absolutely love to see it. He's doing well in the pass game. He's doing really well in the run game. I'm just, uh, I'm just so happy because I had him originally at 31, and He's continuing to play like it. He's playing the SEC um, against like some really high-level competition, and he's succeeding. So I'm just a huge fan. Teams like Dallas that might want to move Tyler Smith to tackle and will have a vacancy at guard should absolutely be looking at someone like this, maybe as a late first type of trade-up option. So definitely want to keep your eyes out for that. Next on the list is going to be Montrell Johnson. So, yeah, we're continuing with the Florida Gators theme here. This guy's been popping off, if I'm not mistaken. He is also from uh, Louisiana. Like, Louisiana produces some crazy talent, I tell you. Like, they're very underrated. But, again, I haven't moved him all the way up yet. He's had two really good weeks back-to-back. -back. He's popped off to me um, the week before. So, definitely keeping my eye out on him. I am very, very, very intrigued on Montreal Johnson's development here because He's going to be an absolute stud, especially like I legitimately think some of these running backs really do need to stay one more year because I'm looking at guys worth a second round pick that might be falling to like the fifth or sixth round just because of how many there are. I legitimately have, I think, 10 to 12 guys worth within the first two days. And that is unbelievable because none of them will go. And that's like there's not even close to that many that will go in that time frame. So, you know, big fan of that. Continuing on here, Jordan Addison has just been balling the fuck out. He's moved up into wide receiver one category. He's just having fun with actually legitimately good defenders. And I put up on who to watch this week. I was looking at Caillou Blue Kelly and saying, hey, how is he going to fare against Jordan Addison and the rest of the squad? Not too well. He let up, I think, 70. No, he let up one 75-yard bomb. He let up something like 84 yards or something like that in a touchdown. I mean... It's pretty obvious that Jordan Addison's a real deal. He's taken a step up, and he was doing really well at Pitt. Um, pretty sure he was the Blitnikoff Award winner, too. But he looks even better this year. He looks phenomenal. And that whole entire USC offense, you know, Lincoln Riley really deserves some credit here because he's kicking ass. So big fan of what USC is doing right there. Moving from 30 to 18 is a huge jump. One of my biggest risers this week in terms of value. Next, we have... Nathaniel Tank Bell. So this guy's really small, right? Like pretty damn thin, sub 160. 
But this guy just carves up defenses. Now, I know Texas Tech is not known for producing super high-level NFL talent, but I do think that they do have this... They have a much better type of, type of moxie to them than a lot of other schools. And, you know, I saw Tank Bell. or <laughs> I always say Bell. I looked up Bell, funnily enough, when I was looking him up uh, on PFF. But Tank Dell, which is his nickname, uh, he just... You know, he's continuing to perform really well, and he's probably the best player on Houston right now, and that's a big plus. You know, he, at his size, gets the attention because people know who he is. So, you know what? If you're able to produce with the spotlight on you, most likely means you're going to continue producing when, even when the spotlight's off of you in the NFL because, again, it's not like Tank Dell's going to be a number one wide receiver here, but he might be a better version of what Tutu Atwell was coming into the league. We haven't done an official scouting report on him, but when that happens, I'm sure he's going to surprise and move up possibly even more because he's a really good player. Like, obviously, we've seen him. He's a good player. But, like, when you watch the intricacies of his game, that's where you might find some faults, but you also might find some gems. Let's continue on here. KJ Jefferson kicked fucking ass this week. You know, he's continuing to improve, and I love to see that. You know, he was my only quarterback to be ranked UDFA starting out the year granted it was a smaller sample size but KJ Jefferson definitely still deals with some big accuracy issues I don't think he's an NFL quarterback just yet but if you're sitting there in the seventh round say hey this dude has a big cannon he's a great runner and honestly he has a pretty damn good processor overall and he's able to perform against guys like Cam Smith for South Carolina I think that's great and again if you guys don't see someone on this list it just probably means that I either love them the way that they're producing or the fact that I didn't like them that much anyway, and that's why they're not falling. There's a lot of fallers. It sucks, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll lament in a minute here. Next off, we have A.T. Perry. Um, so R.I.P. to the graphic. He was supposed to look a lot cuter than that. But, you know, he performed really well. He was already at 86 on my board. I'm moving up to 77. I think if he continues to dominate, again, it's against Vandy. But this guy just went off, man. Like, he has so much potential. He's big, smooth, and fast. I think this guy could be the real deal if he continues to develop. I want to see him against some, like, much higher level talent. i like to see him against Clemson and see how that goes if they play this year. Pretty sure they do. But regardless, I think that he has a ton of potential and could definitely be someone that a team like maybe the Cardinals could look for on a day two. Like, you never know. Just get that guy to replace A.J. Green. But let's continue on here, and let's look at Cedric Tillman. Uh, you know, this guy absolutely went off as well. He looks faster. I'm not saying he's fast, but, you know, he definitely, at his age, should be performing the way he does. But, again, for a team sitting there in the fourth round, and you just kind of need somebody to kind of put in there. Think about Tennessee Titans, for example. You know, this is a great guy to slot in there. You know, he's not going to provide you with probably a 10 to 15 year plan, but he has some baller aspects to him. And, you know, he has great positioning, solid hands. You know, might he's improved after the catch and he's honestly improved his speed overall. So giving him the respect he deserves, that's a huge jump from a sixth slash seventh all the way up to a early fourth round grade for Cedric Tillman. And then next, we have Kalijah Cansey. Yeah, he made some moves because, you know, I guess this is pretty fitting. But he was able to make a lot better moves. He was doing a lot of really good swim moves, spin moves. He looked really fluid. And that's great because this interior class does not look that good. You know, Brian Breesey also should probably get some respect. He might be moving up because I just want to see it for one more week. But, yeah, Brian Breesey is definitely on the up and up. But we also have some honorable mentions. I want to overload you guys with content. I don't want to put up like a five-minute video talking about a couple guys. So you see them all here. EJ Smith. And I know you guys are going to hate hearing this, but yes, I do know EJ Smith to some way, some extent. But EJ Smith's going to be a baller. Obviously, Emmett Smith's son. He's going to be really good. He just needs more time to develop. I'm going to be waiting to put him up in the list because, again, this is a stacked running back class. And... I don't know how much he's going to be able to fare compared to Chase uh, Chase Brown. So, you know, we're, we're waiting to see on him. You know, Javon Foster, he had a really good week. He didn't let up pressures. He went up against Felix Anudike Uzama. 
and then he had a really good week overall. That's a big plus because I thought he was a really good run blocker, but maybe not as good as a pass blocker. Then the guy behind him on the left, so we're talking about the three guys on the left starting out here, Jared Wayne. I've been on this guy for a hot minute here. I had him listed from last year, and I was like, dude, this guy is a smooth route runner. He's been really reliable, and people aren't talking about him. So you heard it here first. Jared Wayne's a stud. Peter Skaronsky, he's already ranked number seven, but if he continues to freaking ball out the way he does, he might be moving up to top five, top three. Like, again, this guy has been... I'm always willing to give people second chances. That's the thing. I had him at 27. I was like, he's not as good as people say. Because at 297, or yeah, 297, he wasn't. He really wasn't. He put on 20 pounds of weight, and he looks phenomenal. Big fan of Peter Skaronsky here. Uh, behind him is going to be TJ Tampa. He was the best graded Iowa State defender this week, and he actually had some really good plays. So you never know. Might be putting him in the top 200. And then uh, Valentine, Carrington Valentine there for Kentucky, has some really good reps there against Florida. So that is going to be the guys on the stock up. Let's talk about the guys on the stock down. Oh, this kills me because he might be falling a lot more than this if it continues. Anthony Richardson. So obviously he's a really good player. He is. But he's just not ready. You just saw some of those processing issues. I was like, oh come on, like, don't, don't say it's true, and, you know, I've had issues with CJ Stroud with that, and I've had issues with other players with that, including guys who are going to be continuing on this list, Anthony Richardson just looked really bad, he did, he, of course, had some beautiful throws, he has a great throw motion, ball flies out of this guy's hands, but if you don't know when and where to throw it, it doesn't matter how good of a thrower you are, now, do I still think the Giants could potentially take him in the first? Hell yes. I still would myself. Because, again, you had a quarterback that had playmaking issues, or not playmaking issues, he was a playmaker, but decision-making issues and accuracy concerns end up developing into the arguably the best QB in the league in Josh Allen. So I think Dable could make that work. It's just how, like, how confident are you that Anthony Richardson's ready? Now, if I were Anthony Richardson, I would still come out because Quinn Ewers balled out and Caleb Williams looks like the second coming of Jesus. I don't want to guarantee a QB3 spot versus I know I'm going to be a QB3 at least in this class. So that's Anthony Richardson right there. He just looked really bad. Uh, Will Levis also looked pretty poor, but I already don't have a very good grade on him. So again, that's why he is not moving. So next we have TVD. Yes, they beat Southern Miss, but Tyler Van Dyke was not the reason they beat Southern Miss. He should have crushed them. He should have freaking dissected them. It should have been a damn sixth grade frog dissection with Southern Miss. It was not. Simply put, it was not. You know, it sucks that TVD is not balling out the way I wanted him to, but to be fair, he's very Mac Jonesy with a team that's not as good as Bama. So I think it's pretty fine to still have him worth a first round pick. I just wanted to take that next step. Could totally happen. Again, saying that guys fell down the stocks this week doesn't mean that they aren't going to be going up. And I have my original rankings listed so that I can always reference back to them. So it's okay. TVD will have his time to shine. ZTF, my God, he should probably be falling a lot more than this. Dude had like a 29.8 PFF grade versus Portland State with zero pressures. This sucks because I thought this guy was going to absolutely have a baller year. He got triple teamed on his 20th snap last year. Guy still has crazy potential. But if you cannot beat Portland State, how the hell are you going to be able to go into the NFL and play against the best of the best? I don't know. I hope he has a bounce back week. I hope maybe he just had like some ankle injury or something that didn't allow him to play the way he wanted to. But we'll see. We'll see because I thought ZTF was really the real deal. Spencer Rattler sucks. He wasn't even good against Arkansas. And then there's all this tape out there from this Netflix series about Spencer Rattler, about him just being a complete asshole to his teammates. The guy has no leadership qualities at all. I mean, his number one fan is a tight end who came over from OU in Austin Stogner. But no one else believes in him, to be honest, except South Carolina's fan base. That's probably going to be in my DMs. But the guy's not that good. He made some stupid decisions. The only reason he was even ranked for me 
is because of the fact that I actually had a starter level uh, starter level talent to him. But when you're a cancer to a locker room, and when then uh, when you back it up with the fact that you can't play against Arkansas. You really have to start looking yourself in the mirror because you'll see this week, if I'm not mistaken, they're playing Georgia. And if Spencer Rattler comes back from that, we'll talk about maybe moving him up. But the longer I wait and see him perform at a subpar level, and he doesn't have, and he's just a complete, to be honest, he's an asshole. He was an asshole to my friends when they were at OU. My, some of my friends were bartenders at OU. And this guy literally was an asshole to them. Yes, I have primary sources that fucking hate Spencer Rattler. It's true. I don't talk out of my ass. I don't really care. Again, I want, like, I'm perfectly fine being wrong. And honestly, I don't like making character judgments on people. But when you're a douchebag to somebody who I know, and then the stories start coming out, and then there's a Netflix series where you're an asshole to your teammates, yeah, it's pretty obvious that you're not built to play football or probably not even be a leader of anything. So, Spencer Rattler, the talent is there, but leadership not so much, and the talent isn't really worth taking all those negative baggage. Bijan Robinson's falling three spots. Chill out. He just is not a first round quality player in a running back class like this. You know, he just, he's, he's a different type of breed for sure. But the fact is that he can be, he can be dismissed. He can be essentially diminished in his value, so to speak in the game plan. And unless you're pretty much unstoppable, I am having a very hard time putting a running back in the first. Again, I must reference this. This is a ranking board fe featuring every player in the draft, and that includes the other running backs. So if this is next year's class where I don't think there's going to be nearly as good of running backs, hell yeah, he's going to be a top 30. Uh, he's going to be a top 30 player. But if I have 10 players worth a second round pick, you naturally can't have that large of a, ma a margin above them because, to be honest, Bijan is not that significantly better. He is unbelievable, but it's not that big of a margin. So have him slightly out of the first. Relax. It's nothing crazy. I had to feature him here because I dropped him a couple spots. Malachi Moore is next. This guy absolutely looked like dog shit, but you know what? I didn't drop him that much. He was the worst player on Alabama's defense. I'm um, pretty sure yesterday. So not good. Not yesterday. It was a couple days ago, but yeah, just definitely didn't look the part. And, you know, when you have guys like Brian Branch on the field who are a lot better than you, you really have to take a step up. And it kind of sucks because I featured him in my first round way, way, way too early mock back in like February. Keaton Slovis, he got injured and then he didn't look good even when he was like healthy playing the game. He gets pressured a lot for sure. But, you know, there's just a certain point where I'm going to have to start hopping off this Keaton Slovis hype train. I thought that he would be good. I had him at rank 64. I think he had him at rank 63 starting out the year and dropped him like one spot. But yeah, no, he didn't look good. Then he got hurt. It's just it's just a whole bunch of bad news, man. He really should be shining and he's not. It it sucks. But then, if I'm not mistaken, this is the last primary player before we get to those last honorable mentions that we're watching, or dishonorable mentions. Layden Robinson absolutely shit the bed. He was awful versus App State. The whole entire Texas A&M team was awful versus well except for our boy antonio johnson but that's okay uh versus app state first off did you guys see the video of like the guys like kind of like shit talking i think they're called something like leaders um shit talking the mountaineers before they just got beat by them it's at one first off regardless if they beat the mountaineers or not that's just embarrassing this is kind of stupid but two you got beat after doing that, after calling like hillbillies and stuff. It's just stupid. And then Layden Robinson looked really bad. I uh, gave him a very small drop to be very generous because I think he can bounce back. But if he continues, this is going to be a very big drop because, again, he's nowhere near Kendrick Green. So Ken Yun Green. Like, if he, he's pretty close to Kendrick Green. If, you know, we got some Steelers fans like myself in the chat. That hit a little bit of a deep stroke. But, oh, no, that wasn't the right phrasing. Pause. But you guys know what I mean. But guys, I'm watching. Jermaine Burton was essentially kind of nullified against Texas. And Texas doesn't have an elite defense. They could. They have some really good players. But I didn't think that they were elite enough to stop Alabama. And Jermaine Burton was more of a non-factor. Kyle Blue Kelly already talked about him. But then we also have Tanner McKee. 
He graded out as the best quarterback, but we're finding out with the NFL statistics, PFF grades for quarterbacks isn't exactly the uh, end-all, be-all. He made some really bad decisions in the red zone, which costed his team a potential chance at a victory. Brandon Armstrong was absolute shit. I think he graded out as a 30. It doesn't even matter. He just looked awful, and then he just graded out even worse. Devon A. Chain, he still had a pretty fine game. I think 10 carries, 61 yards. But he just, like, I was just hoping for a little bit more versus App State. That's all. But that's going to be the video, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to stay around. Would love to talk to you guys. See you on the far side. Peace.